Howdy folks, so super exciting news. I just started work on my new After Effects Masterclass. If you wanna learn more about this, you can join the waiting list. There's a link in the video description. So this week, I've actually got a freelance gig where I need to visualize the distance an object can travel from a specific point on my GeoLayers map. And lucky for me, GeoLayers has a relatively new feature that they've released that makes this process very quick and very easy to accomplish. Let me show you how to do it. Now let's say in this example, I wanna visualize the range of various different brands of private jets, the distances they can fly from a specific location. And in this example, let's just say they're flying from an airport in New York City. So what I would do here is I'm gonna search for New York City and I'm gonna add this map feature to my browser here. And then I'm gonna double click on it so that my map will perfectly center up on this. And it's, this is a very important step. This is the first step you need to do because if you're measuring distances from a point, you need it to be centered up in your map. So the next step is to click on run script file and it's called distance circle. Click on this and it brings up this little dialog box that says the script will generate a circular shape whose radius represents the ground distance to a specific point on a map. Center and radius can be changed and the effect controls of the created layer. So for the radius, uh, let's start off with something big like 3000 kilometers. Click apply. So this is gonna add a huge giant ellipse that's solid white and I can't see it right now because I'm zoomed all the way in on it. So what I suggest you do is you click on the new layer here that's called distance radius and then you can click on add features to browser and create a feature from this layer. And once you do that, you can then double click on this and it will zoom out and show you the entire shape that you have here. And if you'll notice, the anchor point is a little bit lower than the center here and that's due to the web mercator projection. It starts to stretch out at the top, which is what our ellipse is doing here. So these are accurate distances. Now I just wanna change the style of this here. So I'm gonna click on the word fill. We wanna bring the opacity down to like 12 and I'm gonna change the stroke to a solid white. And then I'm gonna open up this shape layer in the timeline, go to contents, stroke, and then down here you have dashes. I'm just gonna turn this into a dashed line and click plus again to add a gap. We'll change the stroke width to 15, pump up the dash to like 200, and we'll make the gap 200 as well. And let's take a look at this. Okay, we wanna bump up the width even more, something like 25. Okay, so now we have this. To make it pop a little bit more, I'm gonna switch the blend mode to add. There we go. Now if I zoom in really close to the edge here, you'll notice this isn't really a perfect circle. It's quite wobbly, and that's due to the fact that we have a lot of vertices here. And this is unfortunately just the way geolayers will draw these ellipses out. What would be perfect is if it could just do four vertices, vertexes, four vertices, and then use Bezier handles to curve these out perfectly. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So what you can do is go to the effect controls here, and this gives you five different parameters. At the very bottom, you have number of vertices, so you can just crank this up to smooth it out. Now here you have the radius, so this is in kilometers right now, but the parameter up here is called unit. This is where you can switch it to imperial, and you can get a little more precise if you want. You can switch it to meters or yards and then you have latitude and longitude. So theoretically, you could manually change the latitude and longitude and move this around on the map, but I don't suggest you do that because you need to account for the web mercator projection. So I suggest you always center up your map first and then you draw out the distance radius using the script. And now what I could do is I could duplicate this layer and I could just change the radius here. This will actually work. So if I change this to 2000, and then I duplicate this layer again, change this one to 1000. Now we're starting to get a pretty cool little visual here. And what I wanna do now is kind of bring down the exposure of the background map and only have my areas here a little bit brighter. So to do this, I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer. So we'll go to new adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring it right above the world map comp. And I'm gonna grab this distance radius that's 3000 and I'm gonna duplicate this one and this will actually be our mat. So I'll click on fill and I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way back up. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this adjustment layer, I'm gonna apply an exposure effect to it right here. So now if I grab the exposure of this and bring it up and down, you'll notice that it starts to do the map here. So all I have to do 
is set the track mat of my adjustment layer to this new distance radius. And now when I adjust the exposure, it's gonna affect just that area. So to get it to do just the background, I simply invert it. And now we've got this cool little look here and it'll just give us a little bit more control over the visual here. So here's before and here's after. So now this is gonna be snapped to my map here so I can zoom out, I can move around, I can change the bearing and the pitch. Really, really cool. So now what I could do is go in and add text and actually animate these and do all these final touches. Now if you wanna dive into some more serious mapping tools on this particular topic, I show how to create isochrones in QGIS. I will link to that down in the video description. I did it for Felt's YouTube channel, and it's essentially a more detailed way to calculate walking distances from a specific point and driving distances. So if you wanna go check out that, it's a really, really short tutorial, like less than two minutes. And if you've ever thought about getting into QGIS, this can be a good way to you know do your first QGIS project. All right, I'll see you in the next one.